Very good morning to you. Welcome to my thought for the day. Um, we are continuing in uh, 1 Peter 2 uh, and verse 17. <clears throat> uh, most of the letters that we read in the New Testament have a similar pattern. Um, they start with um, theological things, what we would call theological things, things about God and about what Jesus has done for us. And then they move into um, an ex exhortation for us to live um, for God and then practical points, pointers about how we can do that. Um, uh, Peter seems to go round in a circle because he then goes um, back into a bit of um, what we would call theology. And then they usually end, the epistles usually end with personal um, remarks to various people um, or about various people. So here we are in this, we've had this amazing sentence in verse 16 live as free people yet without using your freedom as a pretext for evil but live as servants of God and what struck me this morning as I was reading the next verse um, was that it's all about it's all about relationship he doesn't say uh, when he's when he said live as servants of God he hasn't he doesn't say be honest be truthful um, be reliable, um, be faithful, um, do your do your work well. He doesn't he doesn't say those things. What he says is, honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor. And this is all all of it is about how we think and behave, how we how we our motive our thinking in relationship to other people. And we're going to look at the other things uh, tomorrow, probably, um, the next few verses about servants, and then at the beginning of, of chapter 3, about husbands and wives, and then about children. Um, you know, so it's all about the relationship. These short phrases, honour all men. Now that's difficult. There are some men that don't deserve honour. There are some people we know who we'd rather not meet with them if we could avoid it because they always rub us up the wrong way. They're always being unkind. They're always spiteful. They always, um, they always press, you know the sort of people that always press those buttons in us that make us irritable and remind us how much we've been saved from. But we must honour them. Honour all people. All, honour all men. That's not easy. That's not easy. But I remember, you know, I've served as a hospital chaplain for many years. And it was my job, quite often, to conduct funeral services for people who had come into the hospital accident in the emergency department or come into the hospital at all and had no relatives and no one who would take responsibility for organising their funeral after they died. And it fell to me as hospital chaplain to conduct a funeral for them. And quite often these funerals were only attended by myself uh, as the minister and by the um, undertakers, the pallbearers who bought the cough bought brought the coffin in, a plain coffin, and the hospital paid for the funeral. Um, and people said to me, how do, how do you do a service like that? Because they were mostly people I'd never met. I knew nothing about their lives. I didn't know, I didn't know if they'd had any faith at all. I didn't know, I didn't know anything about them. And how could I? say prayers and ask God's mercy on them. But what I felt was that there were two things that made that person worthy of being respected and honoured um, and treated properly, even in death. Um, and the two things were, first, they were created in the image of God and therefore worthy of honour. And secondly, that they were loved by God enough that Jesus died for them.
And on that basis, I would do that. And it was very interesting that the undertakers who would come with me to the crematorium for the service would be laughing and joking um, outside before the service began. Um, and some, you know, some undertakers could be really quite naughty in the humour. Uh, I think the only way they could cope with their job was to be a bit naughty. Um, and then we'd reach the doors of the crematorium and ready to start the service. And I would precede them in. They would, they would become what they would be for any other person, what they would be for the most important and the least that they um, served in this way. And they would come in and they would sit and they would attend the service. And they would say amen in the right places for the prayers. And they would walk out quietly and then they'd be outside with the banter again afterwards. But they they treated the service right, right. But sometimes it was very difficult for me if I'd been outside and they'd been saying these very, very funny things to suddenly be pan-faced and be serious because I knew there was no one there for that person because nobody came. But those people were worthy of honour and I honoured them. We need to honour all people. And I think that that, it, that counts for whether they're small children or whether they're very elderly and they've got Alzheimer's and they don't know anything you're saying to them. We are to honour people. They are worthy of honour because they're each one created in the image of God and each one a person for whom Christ died. Making them worthy of honour. We are elevated by what God has done for us. Not by what we have done for God, but by what God has done for us. Making us in his image. What an amazing thing that is. That God should plant into a frail, mortal creature. Resemblances to him. So many of the qualities that epitomise the, the most wonderful people that live this, in this world are the qualities of God that, was put, that were put into them when they were made in the image of God. And Jesus loved everyone enough to die for them. God loved everyone. That's enough. God bless you. Have a great day. Think about the people you find it most difficult to honour. And ask for God to change your heart. Change your attitude. If you know that's what you should do, put it into practice. God bless you. Have a great day. I look forward to tomorrow. Bye-bye.